particularly when we follow the readings of the Sundays in ordinary time, well, actually all Sundays, we see generally the first reading and the gospel passage are very similar. And the, the second reading seems to have nothing to do with the other two. But today we're going to make put it together, and there is a way to do it, where we see there is something common with all of them. And we have to understand, we're going to look at two aspects of these readings. We see first in the first reading and the second reading in different ways, but the individuals involved are given a call. They are called in one way or another to the service of God. In the first one, of course, the individual involved is Samuel, who is already working in the temple under the, the priest, the high priest, Heli but does not know who God is yet exactly. Doesn't really know who God is. He hadn't been, he hadn't been taught, it wasn't revealed to him. That's what is, we see in this reading. When God himself calls Samuel by name, calls him. Samuel wakes up, thinks it's Heli's calling him and goes to him. And it takes three times before Heli realizes, no, this is God calling him. And he tells him how to respond, speak, your servant is listening. He tells him what the response is. Here's the call, and here's the response. It's God himself now revealing to Samuel he is called to the service, direct service of God. And the response, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. <clears throat> Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. See? And we all have a call, every one of us. So you all have the call to holiness, and that's, that's to be our response. Speak, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Your servant is listening. Here I am. I come to do your will. Now the gospel passage, that too is a call, as it were. And later on we'll even be more so direct as we follow that gospel passage. Here we see the two first two disciples who are not named, they would be John and Andrew. They are disciples of St. John Baptist. And when our Lord walks by, St. John points him out. There is the Lamb of God. There he is. There's the one. And they immediately turn and follow him. And our Lord notices. And he says, well, what are you looking for? Very simple. What are you looking for? They say, Lord, where, where are you staying? Rabbi, teacher, where are you staying? That's all. And he says, come, there's the call, come and see. I recall, well, I was watching a video of a, a young priest, still a young priest today, who was giving his story, how he got his vocation. Quite a story, quite a prejudiced story, but I'm, I'm too long to recount here. But the culminating fact, the culmination was, he was now seeking to follow Jesus closely. He would become, actually he was instructed by his spiritual director to go to daily mass, which was at 6.45 in the morning. He was already doing that. He was already on, in college. And on one occasion, he was with his friends. They were at a bar on the other side of the campus. He had to walk all the way home because they wouldn't take him. He said, no, we're not going anywhere. We're going to stay all night. But you can go if you want to go. So he left. He had to walk all the way across campus. And then he came, as he was walking by, about 1 o'clock in the morning, he came to there was a chapel there, out in the, kind of out in the middle of nowhere along the road. It was used by the Cardinal Newman Society. And he hears a voice calling him, go in. Go inside, he hears. Now, of course, he's thinking, wait, one o'clock in the morning, that's going to be locked close. Who is this? Where is this voice coming from? Where is it going for? And he starts to walk away, and he hears again louder, go inside. And he's thinking to himself, wait, go inside at 1 o'clock in the morning. That's going to be cold and locked up. There's no way I'm going to go in. He starts to walk away. He hears it very loud now, go inside. So he turns and walks, goes right inside. It was open. He just went right in. Now, there's no, the only light is a sanctuary light. So it's a very dim light. In this, and he comes up the middle. And there on the, it's a small little chapel. There's, a, there's the Bible, actually, is what it is, in one of the pews. And he hears the words, pick up and read. Same words St. Augustine heard, which brought his conversion. 
<clears throat> now he picks up the Bible, and what does he open to? This gospel passage we just heard. It was this gospel passage. And when he reads the words, come and see, it all clicked with him. There it is. He had to go. He was being called to the priesthood. Here's how he's going to become closer to Jesus. He had to go. This was it. And he tells us, he just knelt down on the floor and wept for two hours. All right. He now was responding to his calling. He is, as I said, the priest he is today. In any case, this is only just a few years ago that this occurred. <clears throat> well, by now to be perhaps five, ten years, but in any case, this was the call that he received. This was the passage that he read, right? Where these two, being pointed out by St. John the Baptist, they'll go immediately to follow our Lord, and they stay with him the whole day, right? Till about four o'clock in the afternoon, the whole rest of the day, they stay with him, they hear him, and then one of them goes to his brother, Simon by name, and tell him, what does he tell him? We have found the Messiah. And he takes him, Andrew, takes his brother, Simon, and takes him to Jesus, who will then call him Peter. Give us Peter. As we follow along then, as you follow along, you go right after that, our Lord then also found Philip, and he called him. Philip goes and brings Nathaniel, so it keeps going on. But later on, what's going to happen? Our Lord is walking by, and he sees them all at their post doing what they normally do, which was fishing. And he says, follow me. There's their final call, follow me. And they got up and followed him. I believe it was just last Friday, we saw one of those calls. Not a fisherman, though this was, well, the gospel tells us Levi, who is also Matthew. That's the same as Matthew, but he was the tax collector who would have been thought of as a great sinner. But our Lord gives him the call, follow me. And Matthew got up and followed him. And not only did he convert, but so many of his friends as well. You see, the call. And I repeat, we are all called one way or another because we all have the call to holiness, to virtue, to share, our life, to share God's life with him, which means a life of perfection. We have to live a holy life. We're all called to it, every one of us. Now we look at the second reading, and this is from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. And he's speaking rather severely here, but if we look at it carefully, we'll see it's the absolute truth. We can't deny it. Here is how this is what it means to be holy, to perfect ourselves. We have to stay away from anything that will keep us of God. Sin is what he's speaking of here. And here he's speaking in terms mostly of mortal sins, mostly sins of the flesh is what he's speaking of. He's telling us we have to remain pure in order to be what we truly are, or even our bodies, in our bodies, which are temples of the Holy Spirit. When God created us, he created us body and soul. It's both. They go together. The soul it is that communicates the life to the bodies. It goes together. And we have to keep it all pure and holy. That's what we're being called to do. So to stay away from sin. To live a life that says, shows this very holiness. That our, our desire to please God, to be one with him. To serve him. To respond to that call that he has given each and every one of us. But you see, he waits for us to respond. Because he's given us a free will. We have to make that choice. Now we might ask, well, why did he give us a free will? Why do we have to make that choice? Why doesn't he just pull us? Why does he just take us? Because if he didn't give us that free will, we would not have the capacity to love. We wouldn't be able to love. We'd be a mere animal, you see. We would not be able to love. That's what he's waiting for. He loves us. That's why he created us. He loves us. So he's waiting for us to love him in return. That's what our free will is. 
That's why we make that choice. We say, I do love you. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. And what is his will? Our salvation. Let us then do the same, exactly the same policy as ordinance. Live a holy, virtuous life. Let's stay away from sin, all sin, anything that will keep us from our love for him. And thus then we are prepared to share his love with us, with him. We're actually ready that he can share his love with us. And that's what he's waiting for. Let us respond then to, here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. Praise be Jesus and Mary.